If you want to make your audio recording as good as possible, you will need these four effects. The order of these effects matters, and what you are seeing currently is not the right order to apply, it is ordered alphabetically. Also, I said it is a five-step process in the thumbnail of this video, so where is the missing effect? You have to apply one effect twice, and I will show you which one and why. I will improve the recording you see on the screen. I will make a duplicate of the track. It would help us later to compare the original and improved audio. I will rename the top track original. I will improve the second track. Before showing you the five-step process, I will quickly show you a one-click process. Select the whole track and go to Tools. From Apply Macro you can apply any of the macro to make your sound better. I have implemented some excellent macros like Clear Vocal, ESS Reduction, Podcast Improve etc. I will show you in a moment where you can get these macros. All the necessary effects except noise reduction are included in a macro. It will make the sound better in a single click. I will apply Simple Enhance Improve Macro. These macros improve the audio and add a professional EQ on top of that. The audio is improved, and let's listen and compare it with the original. In this lecture, we'll learn how to use AI software to make the sound better. I'll discuss a nice feature of Adobe. In this lecture, we'll learn how to use AI software to make the sound better. I'll discuss a nice feature of Adobe Podcast. Adobe Podcast is in the beta stage during making this video. When I showed you the editing techniques on Audacity or Adobe Audition, you had to identify the problems, take necessary actions to solve those. AI software does these things automatically for you. It means AI software will detect the noise and detect the echo or sound reflection. You see how much improvement I got in a single click. To get these macros, go to this link and get the macro pack. You can also get the macro pack and my audio cleanup course as a bundle at a lower price. You can also think of becoming a member instead to get all the things I built. Back to the tutorial. From history, I will undo the changes from macro. I will go back to the step before applying the macro. Now both the tracks have the same original recording. I will apply the five step process on the second track. To keep our focus on the second track, I will solo it, so the top track will become inactive. The first effect I will apply is normalize. You may have heard previously that noise reduction should be the first effect. That is true, but there is a catch. You can apply any effects before noise reduction if that effect changes all the frequencies at the same amount. It is a bit technical thing, but normalize alters the audio in the same amount on the overall audio. So if you apply normalize before noise reduction, it will not affect the editing process. Normalize can also help to make your audio louder, which is helpful in the editing process. I will apply the standard minus 3 dB peak in Normalize. After normalization, the waveform should grow vertically. The waveform grew a little bit, and that is okay. If the opposite happens on a raw recording, that indicates an issue with the recording. If a waveform shrinks vertically after normalizing, it means your recording has abrupt louder peaks. For my audio recording, the waveform grew and it is safe to proceed to the next step. The next step will be noise reduction. Select a noise-only part of the audio. It will be the noise sample I will give to Audacity. Go to Noise Reduction Effect. Click on Get Noise Profile. Audacity has got the noise profile, and now select the entire track. Go to the Noise Reduction Effect again. This time you have to configure the noise reduction settings. A value of 6 on all these sliders is the best noise reduction setting for voiceover. If you do a noise reduction in your editing process and still hear loud hissing noise when all the processing is done, it means your recording environment is not right. I will apply the noise reduction with these settings. The next step will be EQ. If you apply EQ, it should be after noise reduction and before compression. I have compressor in my effect chain, so I have to add EQ before applying the compressor. EQ is the process of manipulating volume by frequency. In other words, you can increase or decrease the volume of some selected frequencies without altering other frequencies. For voice, a good EQ to start is the low roll-off for speech. The default preset starts from 100 Hz, and I will set it back to 80 Hz. Because some voices can start from 80 Hz and I am choosing a safe option. The human voice has nothing under 80 Hz, so it is safe to cut off those frequencies. I will apply the compressor now. 
To get the reading for compressor settings, I will switch to linear dB. It helps to see the peak values in dB, which is helpful in configuring the compressor. I have explained all the concepts in detail in my audio cleanup course. If you want to learn the details for once and apply that knowledge for a lifetime, it would be a good course to enroll. I have to look for some peaks and where the volume is a bit low. Because I would like the quieter parts to get closer to those peaks. That way the audio will become better audible in all parts. I think I have found a part here. It seems it is around minus 12 dB. As all those peaks are around 3 dB, we can safely assume the quiet parts are falling below minus 9 dB. It is important to get this reading right. Otherwise, the compressor will not work properly. I will go to the compressor effect to configure the compressor. The threshold is set at 9 dB. The noise floor is also important in the compressor. It should be well above the noise level but well below any talking part. I have set it to minus 35 and I think it is okay. Let's quickly measure it. I will select a noise only part and play. It is well below minus 35 and my talking parts are way about it. So a noise floor of minus 35 is okay for this recording. The ratio I am using is 4 to 1 which is okay. I will check the compress based on peaks which is important. If compress based on the peak is not selected, the reading I did for threshold and noise floor will not work. I will uncheck the makeup gain because I will set the volume in the next step. The waveform became more balanced after applying the compressor. So far, I have applied four effects, and it's time to repeat one effect. Which effect will it be? It is normalize. Normalize can be thought of as a volume controller. The peak should be minus 3 dB for the final audio. That is the most accepted value in most of the platforms. I set the peak as the first step. But as I applied other effects, it altered the peak. Normalizing again will set the peak right. You cannot repeatedly apply noise reduction or EQ or compressor. Because of the way those effects works, applying multiple time affects the audio and probably in a bad way. With normalization, you do not have that worry. Because you are adjusting the volume, not altering frequencies here and there. Let's listen and compare the improved and original audio. In this lecture, we'll learn how to use AI software to make the sound better. I'll discuss a nice feature of Adobe Podcast. Adobe Podcast is in the beta stage during making this video. When I showed you the editing techniques on Audacity or Adobe Audition, you had to identify the problems, take necessary actions to solve those. AI software does these things automatically for you. It means AI software will detect the noise and detect the echo or sound reflection and will remove it. It will also take care of the volume level issues and fix uneven recordings. Though all these features may sound fantastic, it has a catch. It works differently with different types of noise and different kinds of recording. If you are happy with the output, you can export it. You can select the track and export. If you export now, only the improved track will be exported as the other track is inactive. Alternatively, you can cross out other tracks and keep only the track you want to export. If you export now, the improved track will be exported as that is the only track. I hope this video is useful to your learning. To make your task easier, consider getting the macro pack. To learn things at a deep level, please enroll in the audio cleanup course. Links will be in the description.